And welcome in game time decisions here on this Wednesday now, January 17th. I'm Joe Ranieri. Appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Sports Grid Network as getting ready for a big night here on the hardwood, both uh, college basketball, where we've got 44 games slated for action. And of course, the NBA in full effect here uh, this evening. And we've got a lot of great head-to-head matchups that we're going to talk about, including a game that features the new look Toronto Raptors. And I say new look because they've already made one major trade this season when they dealt uh, OG there, Ananobi, to the Knicks, and and they got in return R.J. Barrett. They got Emmanuel Quigley. Well, they weren't done. They told us they weren't done restructuring that entire roster. And what they ended up doing then was saying bye-bye to Pascal Siakam, who is now headed to the Indiana Pacers in a deal built pretty much around, I believe, three first-round picks in the future. And uh, the Pacers, uh, boy, oh, boy, that's a real interesting team now, is it not? Uh, He goes to the Indiana Pacers. The Raptors, in return, are getting Bruce Brown, uh, Jordan Noah, Kira Lewis, and uh, a few first-round picks in the near future over the next couple of years. And then, of course, the Pelicans, they got involved in this, too, and they've got a few uh, cash considerations, uh, to say the least. So we've got a little something going on here in the NBA in which we are all, I, who knows, the trade deadline's not even done yet, as we welcome in our radio audience here from around the country on this uh, on this Wednesday. Uh, it is game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri, and of course, we've got plenty of games going on in the association tonight. Loaded slate in college basketball. We do have just a handful of games in the NHL. Uh, and why is that? Well, uh, one of the games got canceled uh, because of weather there as the Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, and they, uh, of course, had to postpone the game. It seems familiar in that part of the country right now, does it not? Where it uh, it feels like the weather, some of the worst that we have seen all year long, and it's causing all sorts of travel delays. Uh, it's been an issue to say the least here. But they are hoping to be able to get that game in tomorrow. So that'll leave us with just two. That is right, two of the the games uh, remaining on the schedule tonight in the NHL. But we got more going on here because if you guys haven't forgotten, there is quite an interesting NFL slate of games Uh, that are going to be uh, coming up here this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. And I, for one, am looking very, very, uh, I'm excited uh, for what's going to happen in Buffalo against the Kansas City Chiefs. That game is going to be Sunday, the late game. And we've got to hope, because believe it or not, once again, the weather, as evident by the cancellation in this game, the weather looks like it is going to be a problem maybe once again. So we are going to have to uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope that there are no more cancellations, delays, pushbacks, uh, or anything of that nature because the weather appears to be playing a role probably not just in Buffalo, but it looks like Baltimore and even out west in the Bay Area there as San Francisco getting ready to take on the uh, the Green Bay Packers, that game too. A little bit worried about some uh, some heavy winds in that game might play a role or an issue in the what the scoring is going to be, which is why it is always important to understand this time of year with these outdoor games what it is that we are looking at here. But all in all, I know Detroit won't have any weather issues. Uh, that's because that game is indoors. And uh, the big question everyone seems to be asking in that game coming up this weekend is what exactly are we getting from the Tampa Bay Bucks? Did the Tampa Bay Bucks show us how good they were against the Eagles and what the future might hold? Or 
did the Eagles show us just how pathetic and ridiculous they really are here. I, nothing is settled uh, in that game as the market has not pushed it to seven, as you can see on the board there, still six and a half. I don't believe it's going to get to a touchdown at any point, but the total is also something that we are keeping a close eye on. 48, 47 and a half, 48 was what the original um, line was when it opened. It does appear that we think Baker Mayfield uh, and what we've seen him do over the last month uh, with the core of wide receivers they have should have no problem putting up some points against that secondary of Detroit and vice versa. There's a lot of people who believe that uh, the Detroit uh, Lions, along with Jared Goff and those receivers, should have no problem taking shots and moving the ball against this Tampa Bay Bucks defense. I have my doubts with both of those scenarios for a few reasons, including the fact that we just watched Detroit score three points in the second half of the game against the Rams, a Rams defense in which, if we're being honest, not as good as this Tampa Bay Bucks defense, but what they did do was they made the necessary adjustments that they needed to make in order to take away what Jared Goff and the Lions were doing well. So I'm not quite sure that we are going to get this wild and crazy shootout in Detroit there in that game. I do think maybe the defenses have a lot more success in that one than the offenses but it's worth seeing whether or not that game does it get to a touchdown will the market push detroit do you believe detroit is a touchdown better than the tampa bay bucks on their own home turf a lot still to be determined about that game and then of course it's kind of hard for me to believe that we have not one but two almost double digit dogs uh, that we're going to be breaking down coming up uh, this hour. C.J. Stroud of the Houston Texans, and of course, Jordan Love of the Green Bay Packers. Both are heading to the number one seeds, and both are not getting a whole lot of respect in the marketplace, are they? Given the fact that we've got uh, almost a 10-point, hard to believe, a 10-point dog with two of the better quarterbacks that we have seen over the last month of the season. There are no more frauds in the NFL playoffs. They are all bounced. There is no more Pittsburgh. There is no more Eagles or Cowboys or Cleveland. No, no. What's left are the six best quarterbacks, the eight best quarterbacks, I think, over the last month of the season. It's a quarterback's league. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around giving those quarterbacks double digits we'll talk more about that as game time decisions continues here on the grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I really thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too. But 
All they need is David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in the game time decisions here on this Wednesday here. We've got plenty going on in the world of sports here tonight, especially on the hardwood, and nobody better to bring it all down for us than one coach, James Young, in the house, ready to roll on what is uh, a fantastic card here, uh, coach, not just in college, but I believe in the NBA as well. And I'd like to start there because we just learned at the top of the hour, uh, welcome to a brand new look Raptors who in just a few short weeks has completely changed uh, the makeup of this team. Uh, And they told us they were not done trading. Ananobi is a a New York Nick now. And it looks like, of course, Pascal Siakam is on his way to the Pacers here. A whole lot of draft picks I believe Bruce Brown was included in that one as well. So uh, give me your thoughts on uh, on this news here and who, if anybody you think, wins this trade, both short-term and long-term. I, You know what? I, I kind of go back to the, the OG trade, Joe. Uh, I think they both won, right? I mean, if, if, let, let's take it first for Indiana's perspective, right? Indiana, dynamic offensively. And I think with Siakam, I think they become – there is a scarier offensively because of the ability of Siakam could be a point forward, could put Albert off the ball, which makes it intriguing, but also one of the more athletic forwards that can run the lanes. So now you have a mm. souped up charger running the lane or the guy that can drive the ball. Um, so I think that's interesting. It's, and it's a huge upgrade. Shout out to Obi Toppin. I said on my podcast before, Obi Toppin went from one of the good time and backing up Randall. To go to Indiana, playing well, not playing D, go to the bench, now you're barely playing at all. Shout out to Obi. Obi's probably real happy right now, but that's not important. Uh, But (laughs) I think the bigger thing, Joe, is defensively, people got to to remember, Siakam, when he got to this league, Joe, was a stopper. He was a defender. A really good defender can guard you, maybe not one through four, but two through four, two through five, Pascal Siakam's a top-notch defender. So the biggest weakness they had was on the defensive side of the ball having a stopper in the wing. Well, now you just address that. Now, are they better than the uh, Sixers? No. Are they better than uh, Milwaukee? No. Are they better than Boston? No. Are they better than the Knicks? I don't think so. But they're better. They're competitive. They got a stopper, and Joe, with only two of the three picks that they give up was theirs, they're positioned now with more picks, right? And 
They didn't include Bennett Matherin, and they didn't include uh, Jarris Walker. Mm. That means there could be, maybe not now, unless maybe you throw a uh, bad buddy in the, in, the, in the trade, you could make another move for another piece down the road because you got tradable assets. Other side, Toronto, they took OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, I turned it into Barrett quickly. Mm. Bruce Brown, who I think is going to get flipped again because I think he can go to a contender or could use a 3 and D guy, uh, a cheaper version of OG. Philadelphia, maybe. You know, Lakers, maybe. Right? And then you turn around, you turn to war who could score, right? And then you got four first-round picks. So, mm. besides you did a good job retooling it, and I don't think he's done yet because I do think Bruce Brown will fetch him something, maybe a, a young piece and a pick, maybe not a first round pick, maybe a couple of second round picks or high second round picks. I think both teams, Joe, did very, very well in this trade. Yeah, well, certainly. I mean, and when I heard the trade, Coach, first thing I thought about is we you were talking about a Pacers team that's got all the scoring talent in the world, but they're 26 defensively, Coach. That changes. With Pascal Siakam, because he will make them a better defensive team. And it's ironic that they've actually been better defensively without Halliburton on the court. But something's got to give, right? Uh, But Mm -hmm. having Siakam on that court now, how dangerous is this Indiana team to make a run this year, do you think? It all depends on their half-court defense, Joe. Because you know it and I know it. Generally generally it slows down in the playoffs right half court basketball becomes paramount and the ability to get stops becomes important very rarely has a team that's been as bad as them make a run but i don't know joe i mean they've they've beaten boston i mean yeah i mean the the bucks don't even want to see that play (laughs) you know what i'm saying so yeah they got parts i'm just curious like it would be interesting if they just if they said, you know what, I, I like Benedict Matherin, I, I, I like Jarris Walker, take those two in bed, buddy, with someone else, pick a trade and go get a, go get a two guard. Like go 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 yeah. get a guy that can knock down shot. I mean, here's here's an interesting one. I don't know, I, I don't know how much it will cost him. I'd be curious if Zach Levine played better defense. That would be an interesting guy I would see on Indiana. Tall, Ooh. athletic. Can get his shot. Problem is, he don't play no goddamn defense, right? So mm. there's gonna be guys, you know, that could make it interesting. Uh, but they're they're gonna be a team that's gonna be at the very least, at the very least, Joe, very exciting to watch the next couple of years. We had some uh, we had some tragic news uh, out earlier today regarding the Golden State Warriors, who uh, uh, their assistant coach has passed away at age 46, after suffering a heart attack while they were out to uh, a a team meal, it seems, uh, Coach, and he had a medical emergency and uh, unfortunately passed away. They canceled the game against Utah here tonight, and as if the Warriors uh, don't have enough uh, trying to figure out what's going on, now they lose a 46-year-old assistant coach. It's just tragic all the way around here, but you you got to wonder what, I mean, what is the psyche of this Golden State team moving forward? Uh, everything that we've read and heard about them leading up to this week was that they were on the verge of cracking anyway. Uh, just a, just a terrible story. And you got to wonder if this is the end of the Golden State Warriors as we once knew them. You know what, Joe, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a shame that what happened, you know, when you, um, when, when you think about it, you know, I, I was um, a high school coach when I, I lost a kid, Albert Martin, a kid that I mentored and, and uh, I lost, we lost Albert 11 years ago, I would say, um, to a heart attack uh, on the floor. And mm. it's something that's hard to recover from um, as a kid, as an adult. As a coach, um, a guy that was very well respected, not just by his team, but this was a, a global guy. Like, and you're seeing a lot more 
Joe, European guys come over to the States yep. and coach because of the, the the European style of basketball so much more. I'm going to be honest with you folks, and people may not like what I'm about to say. More finesse and definitely more fundamentally based and it, with thinking with their mind more than their athletic ability than what we do in the States. So teams are bringing over these guys, and it's, it's such a shame that – that we we lost this guy at the age of forty six. As you and I both around the same age, mm. I'm forty seven. Like that that's some, that's some scary stuff to hear, and it makes you want to know that no matter how old you are, like you got to go to your doctor, you got to get to your cardiologist, you got to get your EKGs. You know, I'm I'm a black male. I got to go get my prostate checked at once a year. Like we're not invisible, mm-hmm. folks. So make sure you're doing the right thing here. But in regard to the Warriors. Unfortunately, I thought they were done bef- way before this. I think there's too much trouble there. I think Clay Thompson is gone. Wiggins has not been the same. Draymond got his money and doesn't care. Uh, so this is just another bad break for a team that's the, the dynasty's over. Yeah, next game scheduled for Friday. No word on whether or that'll take place. We'll have more next on Game Time Decisions. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I really thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too. But all they need is David Montgomery and Spear gets to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid.
All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe Ranieri alongside the coach, James Young, ready to roll here in the NBA. Uh, if, we, if you're just joining us, of course, the big news today uh, regarding Pascal Siakam now on his way to be uh, an Indiana Pacer. So uh, a lot, uh, I am sure, more to come out about this. But in the meantime, uh, Coach, what is the line done for the New York Knick game here tonight? Uh, I believe uh, that they've got an opportunity here to kind of flex uh, a little bit against the Houston Rockets. And I love your Knicks in this spot. The question is, Jalen Brunson going? Is he not going? What What are we... What's the deal here against the Rockets? Because the number, the total keeps rising. I thought the Knicks were playing defense. Well, the total is rising, but the key is that Jalen Brunson is in the starting line of points prop at 27 and a half at even money. Ooh. That's a lot. Uh, I, what I would always look for with the Knicks is, as of late, is Jalen Brunson's assist total. It's at six and a half tonight, minus 140. He's play, He's being used differently now, Joe, in the fact that we talked about with DiVincenzo and OG Ananobi, they spaced the floor better than R.J. Barrett. Secondly, because it's no quickly, number two, he has the ball in his hands more, right? Barrett, quickly, ISO guys, one-on-one guys, right? OG, DiVincenzo, Grimes, shooters. So, at least Ooh. more assists. So I don't have it as one of my play sites, but over six and a half assists and minus 140 is something to take a look at. I would dare say even an eight plus assist at plus 135 uh, should be Ooh. part of your rotation. And then I would also look at the points uh, for OG and Anobi at 14 and a half. He's starting to settle in, Joe, right? He's starting to settle in with this team. And a Houston team, I think about it, I think it's given up, I think, 100 and 20 points or more in every game of this road trip. I mean, they lost in Boston. They lost in Philly. I mean, the only one they had on the, on the road trip was Detroit. And it was 122-120. And this is the last game of the road trip. And you know what happens in the last game of the road trips, right, Joe? You're in New York City. <laughs> Woo! Yep. You're having a good time a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yep. was six. It was six and a half. and went to seven. Knicks covered the spread tonight. Yes. Love it. All right. He's back in the New York uh, Knicks here. And just to to follow up, uh, I I thought maybe the line would move a little bit more here since Toronto lost its most senior and best player. But Miami's in town here. I'm seeing three here now, coach. Three and a half as that starts to creep up here. Uh, I don't even know what to, I mean, what would you do with a team like Toronto now? Is it, it, are they a fade because too much change too quickly or with Quigley and of course, you know, Barrett, maybe, uh, maybe not a bad situation to look to back him at home. Well, you got to look at the fact that number one, Hero's back, Bam's back, yep. Jimmy Butler's back, Lowry's playing. So all the Heat guys are in the line. Now here's the interesting thing, Joe. I, the news of OG being, not OG, uh, Siakam being moved started technically last night. So I think mm. this line is based off of they thought he was going to get moved today, right? I had it when I talked to Koski, set my plays in. I had the money line minus 160. It's minus 150 on FanDuel. Shop around, get your best bet out of that. I think Miami wins. I think Miami needs to get rolling. Transition phase here. Uh, for a team like Toronto. Give me the Miami Heat on a money line tonight. Ooh, I kind of like the way you're going there, Coach. Uh, I, what are we doing with the Celtics here tonight? Doesn't look like you're looking at the uh, maybe the full game, but maybe a prop or two in this one? Yeah, well, for me, I'm just I'm gonna, I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm going to just go with Jason Tatum uh, over his points prop. I think it's at 28 and a half. Jason Tatum, obviously... I'm worried about the the actual spread, Joe. If you want to do something with the spread, uh, m- maybe you want to go, you know, first half uh, or something like that or first quarter. But I'm going to go take him over 27 and a half points. I think it's a spot where it's ready. It's a good scoring Tatum versus a bad defensive team. Boston starting five is banged up. So maybe the usage rate goes up tonight for Tatum. And here's the thing, 27 and a half points, Joe, 
He could have this thing midway through the third quarter because they're going to score mm. and score bunches. Could be over 27 and a half tonight for Jason Tatum. Ooh, all right. That leaves us uh, one game that uh, you have focused on here. It's a boatload of points here, Coach. I, I mean, the Pelicans yeah. are laying, what, a dozen against Charlotte? Does it matter? Uh, should we be worried? How are you approaching this one? No, it shouldn't matter. I mean, <laughs> no, 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 no really. <laughs> We're going to crush them. I mean, I mean, Charlotte, Char- I mean, I know Charlotte's got Lamelo back, but they're, God, they're so bad. And, and, and that, I want to say this. That's going to be a team to watch um, as a team like Charlotte because they have, they have guys, Scary Terry, Gordon Hayward, mm. uh, PJ, PJ Washington, uh, Nick Richards. They got a bunch of guys that I would suspect should be moved at the deadline. I know it is a lot of points to lay, but this New Orleans team is starting to play better, and I just I, I can't get in front of Charlotte right now. Give me the New Orleans Pelicans minus 11. All right, Coach, let's, uh, let's uh, maneuver over to college hoops here tonight. A lot of great, uh, very well-known matchups here, including – the Kentucky Wildcats, who are back home, but licking uh, their wounds here a little bit uh, after uh, losing on the road to a and Now they got Mississippi State to deal with here. Six and a half, Coach, is what I'm seeing. What are you thinking? Well, think about the fact that the, the, two Saturdays ago, they went on the road and they, and they won outright as a two-and-a-half-point underdog at Florida. They just went on the road three-and-a-half as, as an underdog and lost by five in overtime. So th- th- not a bad loss. To a Texas A&M team, which Buzz Williams and their team plays really hard, especially at College Station. I look at Mississippi State as a team playing Kentucky that I think is the best team in the SEC. They've won seven of the last eight games. Uh, you're starting to get better play out of DJ Wagner. We, I mean, DJ Wagner, bro, he's a fourth best guard in the team. Like Shepard, mm-hmm. Dellingham, you know, Reeves, then Wagner. And then you got the big boy, the monster, Bradshaw. Too much Kentucky tonight. Minus, it was kind of reminiscent of last night when it was Florida versus Tennessee, and it was nine, and they blew them out. Same thing happens tonight. Give me the Wildcats, minus six and a half. Ooh, going Wildcats, getting it done. And our boy, Chris Beard, Ole Miss, catching three and a half against LSU. Why, Coach? Why? Make it make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, to me, <laughs> it, 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 it I mean, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, okay, like, th- this should be Ole Miss favored by a couple of points, yada, 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 so on and so forth. And then I look, and I'm like, wait, they're they're getting three and a half points? And, and this is what happens, folks. There's so much parity in college basketball, but there's also the fact that teams that go on the road tend to struggle. I, I think Chris Beard is doing – him and Shaheen Holloway are probably doing the two best jobs in the country right now. With teams that no one expected much – out of them at all. An LSU team, right, that is 10 and 6, but who have they played? Right? And 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 don't don't look at the loss at Tennessee and be like, all right, Ole Miss is done. It was just it was everything went wrong versus everything went right. Chris Beard is too good of a coach. I could take him on the money line, but why do it? I'll just take the three and a half as protection in case they lose a tight one. But I think Ole Miss steals it at LSU. Ooh, look like getting it done. And what about OU? Probably not in a really good mood tonight at home against West Virginia. Uh, that's unfortunate for West Virginia here tonight. No, Coach? <laughs> yep. Yeah, they are in. Uh, what does Charles Barkley say? Well, they're terrible. They're absolutely mm-hmm. terrible. They're the worst team in, mm-hmm. in that league. They're going to, o- o- to Norman. Nor- they just got spanked over the weekend. At home to Kansas, they're going to be in a, in a they're going to be in such a lovely mood tonight in Norman, Oklahoma, that they're going to be nice enough to beat West Virginia by twenty. The same West Virginia team that I, folks, I coach at Monmouth, and they've done. King's done a great job with Monmouth this year. Xander's been fantastic. They're up to Monmouth by four at the break at home. You, you, you're going to now think that they're going to go play Oklahoma or uh, uh, loss. And you get this, Joe. You get these teams that get embarrassed, particularly at home, and they come back the next home game, 
If it's a lesser opponent, you punch them in the mouth. And for me, when you have these teams, especially in the Big 12, where it's so hard to win on the road, even at home, it's tough. You got to bludgeon the bad teams. Great team versus bad team. Great team beats up bad team. Give me Oklahoma minus points. And one last one, Joe. I had to do it. Go. Shout out to my guy, Andrew Tool, Andy Tool. We've been we've been friends for 25, 30 years. Bobby Moe. I'm going with Bobby Moe, but he's eight and a half at home. I just saw him over the weekend, hit a game winner, and win by at the buzzer, right? I think it's for a Purdue Fort Wayne, I'm not mistaken. Well, they're playing Detroit, who is 0-18, 2-8 against the spread the last 10 games. And the same thing that Bobby Moe beat at the buzzer, they lost by 35. <laughs> And the line is eight and a half. <laughs> Give me Bobby Moe minus eight and a half. For you guys who know, if you don't know Bobby Moe, that, that's Robert Morris. For you guys who don't know that. RM tonight getting it done by JY. James Young. Outstanding as always, coach. We certainly appreciate uh, the time here. Know you're going to cash those tickets. We'll be back. More game time decisions coming up next year on the grid. Cash a coach like this. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's all a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams, and in the first half, I was like, "All right, I got one right here on this one." And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They like stopped playing. The Lions' offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game, and I know Tampa's run defense is good too. But all they need is David Montgomery and Spear Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire only on Sports Grid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so many, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my, uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
And welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Much going on uh, this week here, in addition to, of course, college basketball and the NBA. Uh, we do have a few more football games that have to be played in the NFL. And we are off and running on the PGA Tour here as the American Express is next up. And who better to help us navigate through this tournament and our good friend Brady Cannon stepping in here. And uh, listen, Brady, I was uh, I rewatched our segments from last week, and I kept going. I I thought you said Grayson Murray. I was looking for it at, <laughs> at what five hundred to one. Yeah. I don't quite think he made the cut. So, oh, uh, but man. my goodness, what a tournament that turned out to be, and what a tournament this looks like it's going to be. Yeah, a couple of crazy ones here in a row, possibly. You know, the American Express is, I believe, for me, one of the hardest handicaps there is, one of the most unpredictable tournaments. You know, and you get guys like Grayson Murray, 500. You know, it, it wasn't that long ago that nobody knew about this kid, Adam Long, that, that took down Phil Mickelson yes. on Sunday and cashed for 300 to 1. Hudson Swafford, I think he's won here twice. And, you know, that's about all he's ever done. I mean, there there are some, and then of course, last year you get what's supposed to happen, and John Rahm wins it as the favorite. So it, it's really kind of all over the map at the American Express. They play three different golf courses. It's a pro am, so you know the first three days you're playing with an amateur. It takes you six hours to finish. It's a birdie fest. It, it's kind of a, a weird tournament, uh, you know, from that standpoint. Maybe that translates into why it's very difficult to bet, but. You know, this, I, and I've mentioned this with you before, Joe, the two weeks in Hawaii and then here at the Amex is kind of my preseason. I use these events to kind of get a feel for how guys are going, the return to action and whatnot, and and also trying to, you know, work myself into a midseason form and, and, and get my handicap, uh, you know, polished up before we get into the meat of the season. So this is my final week of that quote-unquote preseason for me where I just kind of dabble in a few outrights and then next week when we get to Torrey Pines, I'll get in further uh, into the head-to-heads and the top 20s and all that good stuff. So it, it's a, a very strong field. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of guys in the top 25, top 50, uh, obviously. Rom won't be here to defend it uh, because uh, he's unavailable right now. But wasn't this like the old Bob Hope classic yeah. or something mm -hmm. along those lines where out in Palm Strings and a play? I, the guys swear by it. Uh, they absolutely love this. But what kind of course are we talking about here? Yeah, you're exactly right, Joe. The old Bob Hope. And I, I still like to call it the Bob Hope. I mean, you're right. That was a classic. A and then it's followed up by what used to be called the Crosby, the Bing Crosby. You know, these two mm -hmm. guys would hope their friends and and now uh you know pebble beach is obviously still pebble beach and that's going to be uh, uh uh what do they call it an elevated event uh, a signature yep. event this year on tour and and you're also correct in saying the field is pretty loaded for the american express this year uh one of the best fields we've seen scotty scheffler jason day wyndham clark shoffley cantley no it's looking pretty good the courses you play the la quinta country club uh, the tournament, the Nicholas tournament course at PGA West, and then the stadium course, which is a Pete Dye design. Each player plays each course once for the first three days, and then Sunday's all decided at the stadium course. That's the hardest of the three. That's the one where we have the most statistical information. There's not a whole lot here as far as driving the ball. You want, you want to drive the ball well. Obviously, you don't want to be erratic, but accuracy and distance don't matter too much. Just get the ball out there and get it in play. And then from there on in, it's about approach shots. And, and anytime you've got a birdie fest going on, it, it's going to be about draining a lot of putts. Most of my guys that I landed on this week are pretty darn good putters. I, I started out mm. with Sun J M at 21 to 1. He's just been a machine here. He never seems to finish worse than top 15. He's been here five times. The worst he's ever done is 18th. He's always like 10th, 12th, 11th. So, you know, hopefully he's in that neighborhood again and, and has a chance to kick down the door on Sunday. Um, my second choice was Eric Cole, who's really a birdie machine, you know, coming off of the Rookie of the Year honor for the PGA Tour last year. He was number one in tour in a number of categories involving making birdies. He makes a lot of them. He's a fantastic putter. You know, he's done well for a couple weeks in a row in Hawaii, and I think this course is actually a better fit for his game. So, 
went with Eric Cole, and then Adam Hadwin, really the the uh, Bob Hope or the American Express specialist, if you will. He's uh, got a number of top 10 finishes, and including a couple of runner-ups, fantastic putter. Been playing pretty well uh, recently as uh, we wind down the end of last year and now into this year as well. And then I went a little deeper down the board. Hadwin was 50 to 1. Went a little deeper to Cam Davis at 70. And I've seen him a lot shorter. I've seen his price come down. I, I think there's some sharp play on the Australian Cam Davis. He, he was on a tear at the end of last year. Finished top 10 in five out of his last seven starts. And he had a couple of flash rounds in, in Hawaii, too, where he went really low. Um, I think he could catch a heater here. And, and this, I think, is a, you know, a birdie fest for a guy that makes a lot of birdies. Could be good for him. And then uh, a couple of even longer bombs. I went with our, our good buddy, Joe. You know, I, I'd lose my wise guy card if I didn't at least make a play every now and then on Bo Hostler. Went with Bo Hostler yes. at 81. <laughs> another guy that you remember, another guy that was red hot yep. down the stretch last year. A lot of top 10 finishes. A birdie fest is perfect for this guy. He's done well here in the past. And then uh, a guy that finished sixth here last year, and I think is another birdie fest type guy, uh, just comes off of a win at the Worldwide Technology in Mexico back in November, is Eric Van Royen. And uh, he could be our triple digit guy mm. of the week. Let's make it three in a row. I got him at uh, 105 to one. Well, let me ask you one quick question. We talked about this guy last week, and we were shocked how he got steamed on the board before the first round. And he played really on the first page of the leaderboard was Montgomery. Vegas yeah. guy by yeah. your neck of the woods finished, I think, top five last year here. Uh, also hanging around, what, that 50 to 60 to one shot? You got to let me know if there's any big bets on him before they tee off, because there certainly was last week at the Sony. Yeah, and, and you know, rightly <laughs> so. He, he competed there, like you say. He was around for a minute, kind of dropped off on the final day on Sunday. Um, I think I was on him here at the American Express last year. This guy's going to win mm. a tournament sometime. Yes. He, he was really hot around this time of year last year, and then he kind of cooled off. Um, but this could be the tournament where he heats up again because, like I say, birdie fest, you need a good flat, uh, flat stick. This guy's one of the best putters in the entire field, Taylor Montgomery. So I'll let you know if I see some steam on him. But, no, I, I wouldn't <laughs> argue with a play uh, on Taylor Montgomery here at this venue at all. I love it. All right, so let's switch to the NFL uh, because it, there's some interesting storylines uh, going on here. But I think the marketplace and these numbers – are extremely interesting. You know, Brady, we don't have any more frauds left. The yeah. eight remaining teams, to me, the it's a quarterback league, and you'd be hard. These are the eight best quarterbacks over the last month of the season, I think, by far. I'm yeah, not no, laying a double digits with these quarter. I mean, that's I just I can't fade Stroud or Love and just think they're going to get blown out with how they've been playing. It's tough to lay those bigger numbers there with San Francisco and Baltimore. I totally agree with you, Joe. And Stroud and Love specifically, I think they have such high ceilings that they can keep their teams yep. hanging around in ball games. Now, you know, conversely, the Baltimore Ravens have shown an affinity. You know, I mean, they're a pretty darn complete team. And what I'm getting at here is they have shown the ability to compete with very good offenses. They shut down the Miami Dolphins. You know, they handled San Francisco pretty well. They beat up on uh, the Detroit Lions, the Seattle Seahawks. So, you know, and I think Houston is a darn good offense, you know, of course, anchored by that stud behind center. I just love this kid. He's such a, a welcome mm. addition to the NFL. And I've made a lot of money betting on Houston this year. I, I had, you know, I didn't know if I was off or if the books were, but I, I guess I was more right than they were with my line that I made for last week's game against the Browns. I had, I had the Texans as a slight favorite. And once again, mm. this week, I have them as a shorter dog. My power ratings come to six and a half, not nine and a half. And when I crunched the stats on all four of these games this week, it all comes up in favor of the underdog. And that kind of worries me a little bit. My power ratings are pretty close to where the lines are uh, at the open or what have you, or where they are currently. Uh, but this Ravens Texans one was the one that was most off. And, and I've noticed that I think I have the Houston Texans rated higher than most people. And, and maybe and for, so far I've been correct. It could change this week. 
I, I think last week they knew that was a game they can win. I'm not sure if they have that mentality this week, but I'm with you, Joe. I, I, I can't lay it. I did play the Ravens on a money line parlay with the, uh, with the 49ers and the Lions, um, but I'd probably take this before I laid it. That feels risky because you know how it is as well. You go yep. into this second week and everybody's high on the teams that pulled off the upset. Oh, they're on a roll. They're going to, you know, and, and I, I don't want to fall into that trap either. I mean, you know, Baltimore could do what they did to Miami and Detroit and all the rest and just steamroll this team. But um, yep. I, I played it safe. I actually did play a, a 10 point teaser where I went the other way and took the Texans to 19. You know, I think this, this total has come down from 45 or so down to 43 and a half or whatever it is. I mean, if I'm catching almost 20 points, I, I think I'll be okay. And, and CJ Stroud will keep us competitive. Yeah, I, uh, I think there's a lot of, of the future quarterbacks of this league are playing or remaining, I think, here. I think you want to take a big snapshot of what the future in the NFL looks like. These eight teams, I think, are a pretty good uh, indicator of what we've got. Uh, are you leaning one way or the other with Buffalo and, and Kansas City? Obviously, the game, everyone is going to uh, the two heavyweights going at it here on Sunday night. I think this one, you know, from a betting perspective, you can say, okay, I'm going to tease Kansas City up. That's, that's probably the easiest answer. Um, but I do believe it is a very tough game to figure out. Um, you know, it seems that Kansas City kind of has Buffalo's number, especially in the playoffs, a little same season revenge here. Kansas City has a massive rest advantage. You know, they, they played uh, last Saturday. And then, of course, Buffalo plays on Monday. They get that game moved because of the weather. So Buffalo's on a short week here. And, and then, you know, the narrative out there, Buffalo's finally got him at home. Patrick Mahomes finally going on the road for a playoff game. You know, and I, I made the number three. My power ratings came to three. That was kind of immediately taken, but we're not necessarily saying it, seeing it go yet back to three. Um, that tells me that the wise guys are probably siding with the dog here, of course, taking the three. And, and, and you don't want to take the two and a half at this point, but the fact that it's stuck there uh, tells me something. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, you know, they have a lot of injuries, unfortunately, especially on defense. Mm. I think Gabe Davis is a real key for this team. And I don't know if he's going to be back until possibly the Super Bowl if they make it that far. But we know about that Kansas City defense. We know about how, I mean, they, they shut down the Miami offense and their receivers. If Buffalo is missing Gabe Davis, I think that just puts that much more pressure on the rest of the receiving core. I think you're in for a real good one, probably low point total. I would probably lean towards the under here. And uh, I, I think Kansas City tees to eight and a half is the easiest way to go. I don't really have a great feel for who's going to come out the winner. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to make it simple. I'm teasing Kansas and I'm backing Buffalo on the money line. I'm going to drink as much bourbon as humanly possible <laughs> and hope it lands somewhere in between there. Brady Cannon, always a pleasure, my man. Game Time Decisions returns after this. <laughs> Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I really thought the Lions 
we're going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too, but all they need is David Montgomery and Spear Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, there's, so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Neri. We look to close out this first hour getting ready for the opening uh, tip around not only the NBA, but of course, college basketball has some absolutely huge games getting ready to go off here tonight as conference play off and running here this season. But you got to look forward uh, to number one, newly crowned, by the way, number one in the country. How about UConn, huh? How about them Huskies? They are looking to continue their winning ways here tonight against number 18, Creighton. That's going to be in stores, Connecticut here. And really, this is, uh, they have been phenomenal. They are now, what, 15-2 and two on the season, 5-1. and one. They have gone unbeaten since that opening loss against Seton Hall back on December 20th. They just uh, beat down Georgetown on Sunday, 80 to 67. And because everybody else that was in the top five managed to lose somehow last week, UConn remains standing here as Dan Hurley uh, loving it. Uh, Once again, he's got these guys primed and ready to go here tonight. Also, uh, Klingon, I believe, is back here. Donovan Klingon is, uh, they said, has a good opportunity. He's going to be taking warm-ups uh, tonight and could very well play in this game. And that is great news for UConn, not great news for Creighton. That's just one of the many games here we're going to be keeping an eye on when we come back as we've got much more to discuss with uh, the NFL divisional round coming up. But, of course, plenty of NBA, plenty of college hoops, just a couple of NHL games, but storylines around the world of sports. And we will get to them all in case you missed any of this past hour. Don't worry. You don't have to go very far. We'll be back, and we will reset it for you. Get you ready for a great night of hoops coming up next year on Game Time Decisions.
All right, welcome back. Off and running another hour here of Game Time Decisions on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us as uh, we are getting ready a ton of basketball here tonight on the slate, including uh, 44 college basketball games, loaded slate in the NBA, and an interesting slate with a couple of teams as we had another blockbuster trade if you are just joining us, we'll have more on that and the matchup of this team here tonight. But first, no better way to kick off our number two than a little same game parlay. And our good friend Davis Maddock, he's got something lined up here tonight. What do you got for us, Davis? All right, guys, we are back for another same game parlay. Over on the FanDuel Sportsbook, we are locking in on some NBA action. Tonight, we have the San Antonio Spurs, one of the three worst teams in the NBA, traveling to play one of the two best teams in the NBA, the Boston Celtics. Obviously, massive spread in this one, 16-point spread. And you know what? We are actually going to take the San Antonio Spurs plus 16 points here. A couple reasons why. They are done playing Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Sochan, a point guard. They've got Trey Jones starting a point guard. Absolutely massive. It's actually been huge for them over the last uh, week of the season. They've been they've been much better. A couple close losses to the Hawks, to the Cavs, to the Bucks, and then two wins as well. So we are taking the Spurs plus 16. We are going to take the under on 237. Obviously, uh, if we are betting on the tighter spread here, we are going to want fewer points scored in this game. I also have a suspicion we might see a couple of the Celtics starters rest in this spot. And then finally, we're going to take Victor Wembanyama to score 20 or more points. There's been a huge change in Wembanyama's playing time and his positionality the last two weeks of the season. He's finally just starting at center. He's got over 24 points in four of his last five games. I don't think the prop market has fully accounted for how much easier it is for him to get buckets when he is playing center and not having to shoot three-pointers. This three-leg same-game parlay is going to give us plus 403 odds, Spurs plus 16, under 237, and Victor Wembenyama to score 20 or more points in this game. Good luck tonight, everybody. All right, Davis, appreciate that. Looking forward to uh, these games here tonight as we welcome in our radio audience from around the country on this Wednesday here, January the 17th. It is Game Time Decisions. I'm Joe Ranieri, and uh, opening tip here around college hoops and the NBA getting ready, including in Toronto as the New Look Raptors, and I mean New Look Raptors, have already uh, pulled off one major trade this season, but they weren't done. Not only did Ananobi move on to the New York Knicks and Toronto welcomed in R.J. Barrett, of course, and Emmanuel Quigley, well, they were not all that happy with keeping Pascal Siakam around, who's also due for a new contract coming up next season. Well, they don't have to worry about it anymore because the Indiana Pacers are going to have to figure out a way to pay Pascal Siakam since that is where he is on his way. First round picks galore there for the Raptors who really have a good opportunity now to reshape this franchise for the future. They will have to make some decisions, uh, obviously, with RJ and, uh, and Quigley and who are they going to pay, who aren't they. Uh, Siakam is not going to be cheap. Uh, they're going to have to figure out a lot of talent with Halliburton and company on that team. Can't keep them all. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with Indiana as well as Toronto. Uh, and, of course, uh, the opportunity, though, the win-now opportunity for the Indiana Pacers uh, has just ratcheted up a little bit, has it not? It's quite obvious that they're willing to go the rental route in order to really – make a push at this this year. So that tells me, well, they improved their defense uh, offensively. I don't, you always need some depth and Siakam is such a unique uh, player there in the forward spot. I can't wait to see what this team looks like. Uh, they have already gone toe to toe with all the top teams in the NBA. Uh, and now they've just gotten a little more dangerous here by adding 
Pascal Siakam. So looking forward to that. In the meantime, though, they are taking on the Miami Heat here tonight. Uh, and Toronto will have to deal with Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Bam out of Bayou. Uh, all look available and ready to go here tonight. Uh, the total has been climbing. Uh, and it has uh, gone up now to 226 is what it looks like, three and a half for the Miami Heat. And uh, I would expect uh, Miami and company uh, ready to go here, although something tells me points are coming. Uh, even with uh, no Pascal Siakam in there for Toronto, I do think uh, the pace uh, will be ratcheted up a little bit, and we are going to get ourselves an over tonight with Miami and Toronto. I have no idea uh, why it is the market continues to suggest we lay points with the Milwaukee Bucks on the road, but that is exactly what you will have to do here tonight as the Milwaukee Bucks are in Cleveland getting ready to take on the Cavs. And has anybody seen the defense for the Milwaukee? Of course you haven't because they don't play any. But yet, somehow, they're supposed to go on the road to a very well-rested Cleveland Cavs team who was actually, in their last five games, I believe, 5-0, and 4-1 oh, and one against the number. They are well-rested. Uh, nobody is going to, in any way, shape, or form, get in front of Donovan Mitchell. He's going to score as many points as he wants to. Why? Well, who's going to stop? Dame Lillard? Uh, nobody is playing defense here on the Bucks, who have had their moments offensively here this season but the reality is when you do, when you have a team that does not want to play defense not that they're incapable they just have no desire to really Lillard is not going to play defense uh Giannis knows it's a long season they, these are not guys sacrificing themselves here in the middle uh in the middle of the season in January to slow down anybody including uh, tonight here against the Cavs. And the interesting thing about Cavs with Jared Allen, they've got some size, they've got defense, and they've got guys that can shoot for days. I don't think it's a great matchup for the Milwaukee Bucks, especially on the road. And yet here they are laying four points. I'll take the four points here and would not be shocked at all if the Milwaukee Bucks end up losing this game outright, and the Cleveland Cavaliers continue their winning ways. They are in tremendous form here, and I am looking forward to seeing how that goes. And, of course, Nick fans are getting excited here. Can they get back on track as Jalen Brunson looking to get things back on track after missing the last game in which the Knicks just could not offensively Get it done down the stretch without him as they fell to the Orlando Magic. But I do think we are going to get a W here for the New York Knicks. We'll have much more in the NBA when Game Time Decisions returns here on The Grid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but he's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I really thought the Lions 
we're going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too, but all they need is David Montgomery and Spear Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Derek Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network on this Wednesday. Uh, opening tip here, away we go. Early games in college hoops uh, getting ready here at the uh, bottom of this hour. A lot of the NBA action uh, tipping off at 7.30, but here to help us navigate through it all, the one and only Mr. Mark Zinno, ready to roll here tonight. And Zinno, I want to start in one of the bigger games here because we're dealing with college basketball and the number one team in the country mostly because nobody else could win last week and UConn could so now they are number one taking on the Creighton Blue Jays uh, I believe Donovan Klingon is back uh for them or at least was gonna try to give it a go here does uh UConn remain number one here after this game do you think they remain number one uh I don't know if they're gonna cover this number tonight though I mean look even if Donovan Klingon plays, uh, and I haven't even bothered to check, another game just tipped off. I, it, I don't think I'd feel any different about this game. I mean, these are two teams that are very evenly matched. UConn third in adjusted offensive efficiency against a Creighton defense that's 12th in the nation in defensive efficiency. Blue Jays 24th in offensive efficiency. Huskies are 45th. So, you know, they kind of complete each other's, you know, weaknesses on the other side. But Creighton's been very good in true road games this year, Joe. Four and one straight up and against the number with their only loss being a five-point loss to Marquette on the road, which is a team that I think, you know, power rates pretty much in the same level as Creighton and UConn. Their four road wins were an average by 21 points. This isn't a Creighton team that's gone out there and just snuck out a two-point win on the road against an inferior opponent. They're not even a team that's like shooting bad and playing bad on the road. They're actually shooting 46.5% from the field and 36% from three on the road. Those are numbers a lot of teams don't put up at home. Their defense doing the job on the road, holding opponents to 41% shooting, 66 points per game. UConn's only covered one home conference game this year. It was against DePaul. They haven't separated from anybody in this conference. They lost to Seton Hall outright by 15. They beat, be, only beat St. John's by four, Butler by seven, Xavier by five. So other than DePaul and Georgetown, the dregs of this conference, UConn hasn't demonstrated that they're able to be six and a half points better than anybody in the rest of the league. And, and the one more kicker here, Joe, is that when teams get that number one ranking in their first game, they're only 9% against the spread uh, when they play that game in that so, it's a very advantageous spot here for Creighton. I, I don't know if they're going to win this game. Um, I think that they are are, are going to be able to keep it closer than the six and a half. 
It, well, it's uh, they are off and running in that game. No uh, Donovan Klingon uh, in the starting rotation, so we'll see if they uh, if they bring him in at some point. Nine six right now, Creighton on top of UConn in stores. Uh, we do have another game that's going on. I know you were looking at as well. Kind of a head scratcher here, but Old Miss. You know, you either love this team or you hate this team here with Chris Beard. Uh, but they bounced back pretty well against that loss to Tennessee to open up SEC play. Well, LSU is going to try to do exactly that here tonight, uh, taking on Old Miss. It's 11 9 early on, Old Miss. How are you looking at this game with Chris Beard and company getting what, three and a half, I think? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I took LSU on the money line. This system here, Joe, of an unranked home opponent laying points to a ranked opponent. It's been pretty profitable to start the year. Now, look, I know the Rebels are ranked 22nd in the country, but that's not what the numbers say. It's not what Ken Palm says. It says they're 70th overall in adjusted rating. And there are a few things that are significant about this, starting with their defense, which is 119th in, the, in defensive efficiency in the country. And LSU has a major advantage in the fact that they're 52nd in defensive efficiency. In fact, to start conference play, the Rebels are 12th out of 14 teams in the SEC in defensive rating this year. The Rebels also have the number one luck rating in Ken Palm. What does that mean? Well, they've gone five and zero oh, straight up in games decided by three points or less. And some of those wins against some really bad teams like Detroit Mercy, which has a ranking of below 250, Sam Houston State, Temple. Like without these wins, Joe, this is not a team that gets to be ranked 22nd in the country. So I think regression is coming for them as right. they hit conference play. Just a fourth true road game for Ole Miss. Their other road win, road wins were a one possession win against Temple and a one possession win against UCF. So they were blown out by Tennessee as 12 point underdogs in their first loss of the season on the road here. I know they bounced back against Florida, but LSU can shoot. They'll have an advantage on the boards here. Uh, Tigers are 14-7 and seven straight up against Ole Miss the last 21 meetings. Double revenge spot as LSU has lost the last two meetings against Ole Miss. Do you, were you leaning one way or another in the Kentucky game? They're out in front 18-14 there. It seemed the whole world I, thought Kentucky would bounce back. It, it, yeah, was that I, where you were leaning as well? No, I, I thought Mississippi State might be the right side um, just because of their defense. You know, and, and it's one of those things where yeah. after a loss like that, you know, going to play what is clearly an inferior opponent, sometimes remember, these are college-age kids that, you know, for them to get back up for this thing again in a home spot here might not be, you know, exactly what happens here against a really tough defense that presses really hard. So stayed off the game, but I definitely leaned Ole Miss. All I mean, right, I definitely so there you go. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't blame you here. I, I, I'm going to be interested to see Houston's response tonight, too, taking on uh, Texas Tech that seems to be bulldozing everybody here. But a couple of losses here for Houston, maybe coming back down to reality. They're laying 12 and a half here tonight against Tech, who comes in, I think, is the 25th ranked team in the country. Uh, let's see what you got here, Houston. Welcome to the Big 12, I guess, here, Zen, huh? And what's interesting about that, it's such a low total in this game, right? Like 129 and a half, as you see on the screen there, I, to get to 12 and a half and cover it and it still stay under, you're talking about like one of these teams, that, you know, Texas Tech not getting to 60, right? Like 70 mm. to 58, put you right there, right? I mean, that's, that's, so if that, if that's your assumption that, you know, either you take the over here because Houston is going to push this thing over and cover handily, or it's Texas in the under because, Houston ain't scoring, and and I would not lay mm -hmm. 12 points in a conference game. It's just a really tough sell. It's a, it almost like if you didn't tell me, uh, if you said they were laying 12, I would have come up with like Evansville or something. But Texas Tech is an interesting team to be laying 12 and a half. So looking forward to seeing how that rolls out. Uh, we had NBA news earlier today, of course. Uh, Siakam leaving Toronto on his way to Indiana. Makes that team a whole lot of fun here to watch the rest of the way. But in the meantime, there is a dog on the board here tonight that might be the most disgusting thing I've seen, and yet you're going to make a case to back them. I can't wait to hear this here tonight. Yeah, um, in your hold your nose, <laughs> kind of don't watch, just check the score in the morning <laughs> game here. The Brooklyn Nets are laying six and a half points to the Portland Trailblazers, and I am all over Portland tonight. Nets, 314 mm. and one against the number. In their last 18 games, 1-9 against the spread, their last 10 road games. That's allowed 120.1 points per 100 possessions over that 18-game span. Look, I know Portland's offense is one of the worst in the league, so it makes this handicap even tougher. 
But I just don't see the Nets as being markedly, markedly better. Brooklyn is 9-5 against the spread as a favorite this year, Joe. When the spread is less than six, they're 5-1 and one against the number. When it's six or more, they're 4-4 four and four ATS with their four covers coming against, ready for this, the Pistons, the Wizards twice, and the Heat. One of those four ATS losses when they were bigger than a six-point favorite was to these aforementioned Trailblazers 10 days ago in a game they lost outright in overtime. They also failed to cover against the Pistons, the Wizards, and the Hornets, who are three of the worst teams in the league. Trailblazers are on two days rest here after a game at home, uh, and the Nets are beginning a – this is the first game of a four-game road trip out west with just a day off in between. Brooklyn 1-5 and five against the number against teams in the Northwest Division this year, allowing 119 points per game on the road. Their average spread on the road this season is the Nets plus three and a half. You're telling me now they're laying six and a half? Too many points here. Stink it up, Portland Trailblazers. Take the points. Well, you were, you're you 100% correct there, uh, Zinn. That was without a doubt the most disgusting pick we have had on this show in a very, very long time. And I absolutely love it. Uh, hold your nose doesn't do it. Doesn't do it justice at all. I, I, I'm but I'm, I'm not even going to watch. I'm just going to check the score in the I, morning. I'm not going to put myself through it. The only way to watch a Portland Trailblazers game is to not watch it and wake up in the morning and see if they actually covered. Uh, Zinn, best of luck with those plays here tonight, my man. Good luck this weekend. Uh, but don't go anywhere. Uh, CT Bet stepping up, stepping in Ooh. next year on Game Time Decisions. <laughs> Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's all a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. Thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams, and in the first half, I was like, "All right, I got one right here on this one." And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They like stopped playing. The Lions' offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game, and I know Tampa's run defense is good too. But all they need is David Montgomery and Spear gets to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire only on Sports Grid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my, uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one 
of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions, and we've got plenty going on this week. Lots still to be decided in the NFL, and I can't think of any, anybody more profitable who's been laying winners out for you since the beginning of the season than our man, CT Bets, Chris Thurston, stepping up and in here on Game Time Decisions. And, uh, well, now we're down to uh, eight here uh chris and i you know what i love best part about this time of year is that now all the frauds are out right the philadelphia's the pittsburgh's right the eagle we're all you're all gone right so now we're left with what should be well the the top eight teams that remain at least since i would say the last month of the season so let's start with the bucks and detroit because uh, you know, I'll be the first one a minute. I was wrong about Baker Mayfield. I thought they were one of the biggest frauds there he was going to be. But I don't know how many more games this guy's got to go out and ball out and win games. I All right, you win, Baker. I'm impressed, my man. But what are we doing this game coming up? Yeah, you're right. I mean, Baker and his offense really didn't start clicking until what? Like kind of December. And we saw it continue on, on Monday night versus the Eagles. But I'm throwing the, you know, they played earlier in the in the year, the uh, the Bucks Lions, and I'm throwing that Lions 20 to six road win over Tampa Bay that occurred, I think it was back in October. I'm throwing that out the window. This is a totally different Bucks team now, as as we can see from Monday night and you know their month of December and, and January. And Mayfield, you know, took a little longer uh, than the Bucks wanted to get settled, but he's thrown for 250 in four of his last five games. Now he gets to face a Lions team that's, you know, pretty meh when it comes to passing defense. Uh, the Lions and Dan Campbell escape with a, a one-point win on, on Monday. I was on Detroit there, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like Campbell was playing from the second quarter on not to lose. It, he threw that aggressiveness that we're used to seeing all year long out the window. So – I don't know what happened there. He, I, I, did he get a little scared? I, I still don't agree with McVay's call to to kick that field goal and not go for it on fourth down. Probably ca- cost the Rams that game. You know, yeah, Detroit's going to be rocking, and these fans are uh, they're on cloud nine right now. But Mayfield looks dialed in right now, and he's playing for his career and a contract. He, he gets to now play in a dome, which is perfect throwing conditions. The Bucks defense has been. Pretty great as of late, and I expect them to show up in this one. I think six and a half is a little too much for the Lions to lay here in the divisional round matchup, Joe. I haven't got to the window yet because I think I'm going to see a seven. I, I, I think mm. the public's going to push that number up to seven, and when it gets there, I'll get to the window on the Bucks here. Right now, lean Bucks plus six and a half, waiting for that key number of seven up. Yeah, it's uh, and get ready because if it hits, it won't last long. So uh, it'll be uh, it'll get pounced on. But you're right. Uh, there seems to be an awful lot of uh, Detroit and Dan Campbell and Jared Goff love these days here in the marketplace. So we'll see what uh, what happens with that one. Hope for that seven. In the meantime, the game everyone is going to be looking forward to on Sunday night, the late one, Bills, Chiefs. All we've heard about the last four or five years was only if I, we had you in Orchard Park. Well, you got him in Orchard Park now here, uh, and hopefully, you know, the governor doesn't cancel the game or move it to, like, Wednesday or something. But what exactly are we going to do here in this one, CT? Joe, have you heard yet that this is the first road playoff game for number 15? Crazy. That's all I've been hearing. This is the first road playoff game, and he's not going to know what to do, Joe. You know he has he has <laughs> no one that could catch the ball as well. The offense is terrible. 
That's all everybody's saying. It, it's no surprise the Chiefs offense hasn't been its usual self, and they've plenty of, made plenty of mistakes this year. But this team still has the best player in the NFL on their center for them, and that's a big advantage. The Bills, who are already banged up on defense, somehow ended up with more injuries, making matters worse for them uh, versus Pittsburgh on, on Tuesday. Bernard and, and Johnson had to, to leave the game versus Pitt. The back seven's pretty banged up. Now they have to play the, the Chiefs on a short week. Chiefs defense is underrated. They didn't first force like a ton of turnovers this year, but they've been a beast in the red zone. This is a very strong and healthy D for the Chiefs. Coach Fatso, man, I think he's going to be able to di- take digs out of the game, contain him. Josh Allen has been great as late, but despite all his turnovers in the in the regular season. But I think he could be under some pressure here on Sunday. Could go back to his old ways that we saw earlier in the season, make some mistakes. I just think the Bills' defensive injuries is too much for me, for me to look past, Joe. They stand out in a big way. I, I know this isn't the same Chiefs, but I think 15 finds a way to put up some points, win this game. Uh, I think whoever wins this game, Joe, covers the spread. If the Bills win this game, they'll cover the two and a half, the, the three. Um, Casey, I think they're going to win the game outright here. So uh, I'll play them on the money line. Um, I, I, I don't want the points, Joe. I think 15 wins the game. Kind of like the edge they have in field goal kicking, too, because how many more times has Butker uh, actually uh, delivered when they needed him most in those conditions? So, uh, it's going to be a, a war to say the least, but there is another game uh, out west where eh, my, you know, it's, it looks like it's going to be a pretty windy game. But if you thought uh, there was a lot of love in the marketplace, there's none more than Jordan Love and what he is getting here, uh, CT. So what gives? Is it come back down to reality for Jordan Love and Green Bay or are they for real here in your mind? You know, I meant when I was wrong, and I was I was wrong last week about Jordan Love and Green Bay not being able to compete with Dallas. Uh, you know, some of those side, sidearm slingers, uh, you know, th- those were uh, Aaron Rodgers' uh, S there. Very impressive. Uh, D was uh, was great. They forced turnovers and sacks. Niners, we all know, you know, had the week off, the bye week, and, and they needed it, right, Joe? A lot of their stars ha- had some injuries, and looks like they're all going to be ready to go here. Uh, this weekend, especially uh, McCaffrey. So that will be a nice shot in the arm for this Niners team. And Joe, it was a huge win for Green Bay. I don't want to take anything away from them. I just think this Saturday is going to be a totally different uh, task for them to to, it, to go to Santa Clara here. And Dallas did what we're used to, to seeing them do come playoff time. And I should have known better. That's what Dallas does in the playoffs. Now, this is the pack's second straight road game. They're traveling to the West Coast. It's not really an easy task to, to go and travel to the West Coast, mm. take on probably the league's best team, even though Purdy, you know, he struggled down the stretch there. I believe he's built for this, and I think he's the guy uh, for this Niners offense. Shanahan's offense is going to be able to put up points versus this Joe Barry's defense. Uh, you know, they led, uh, they led the NFL in points per drive this year. I expect them to continue to dominate on that side of the ball. The Niners D should be able to stop the run game, unlike Dallas was was, was able to. Um, if not for all the QB injuries last year, I think Sam Fran would have taken care of business versus the Eagles. I think it's a great story yeah. for the Packers. I think the fairy tale kind of comes to an end this weekend. This is the Niners' time, and I expect them to be in the Super Bowl. I don't like laying this much this many points in the NFL, Joe. And especially in the playoffs, I know it's a tall task to go and cover. Got to win by double digits, right? I mean, it's nine and a half, but I'm doing it here. I think the Niners are going to be able to take care of business and cover the spread here. Niners are my best bet a divisional round weekend here. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like the over in that game, uh, too, because I think uh, the Niners could very well pour it on against that sieve of a defense the Green Bay Packers have there. So uh, should be a good one uh, in this weekend here, Saturday and Sunday. Cream rises to the top here, so uh, a lot still to be determined. Let's talk college hoops here tonight, CT, because I believe you have a game coming up top of the hour. Which one Which one are we looking at here? I do, yeah. It's uh, the Big 12, which is a power conference right now. It's It's wild. Uh, how many good teams are in the Big 12, and it's Central Florida 
versus Texas. And we're looking at the total here, Joe. I went up and over 136 and a half. Looks like it's about 137 right now. Shop around. You could probably get a 136 and a half as well. If you if you find a, a you might find a 136 and a half a little juice. Uh, I like the over here, Joe. Texas coming off a loss to West Virginia. Uh, they have some scores. They have a bunch of kids that could shoot the ball. And Central Florida tends to play up in class. Or no, you didn't forget this. A couple weeks ago or a week ago, they yeah. beat Kansas. So they have some scores as well here. I think 136 and a half is a little too low. I have this more playing in the 148, 149 range tonight, Joe. Hmm. I, I, I kind of love where you're uh, heading there. I'm also, now that you just said it here, I don't know what North Carolina's team total is tonight, but uh, I bet you it goes over against Louisville. This North Carolina team looks like they've got another gear here, CT. Am I uh, scoring? They're laying 21, and it's probably not even enough against Louisville. It, it's probably not enough. I agree, Joe. This is one that actually <laughs> almost made my card. I made the game closer to 24, 25. They could score at will. They've been very, very impressive here. Louisville, uh, man, they, they just have struggled the last couple of years here. And uh, they they are probably going to get blown out here. That number tells you it. Yeah, I, I like where your head's at, Joe. North yeah. Carolina team total over. I don't know what it is, but that thing's got to go up and it over. It ain't enough. <laughs> it ain't it's enough, whatever enough. it is. That's By the way, fair. Donovan Klingon actually in the game for UConn now. So it's uh, he is back for the number one team in the country. I'm sure there'll be a minutes restriction yep. on him. CT bets. Always a pleasure, man. We got tickets to cash this week. And of course, we'll do it again next week. My man, game time decisions returns next on the grid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going yeah. to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> I really thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too. But all they need is David Montgomery and Spear Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Jared Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my, uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible 
to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. So much going on here tonight. Great college basketball on tap. Bunch of games already underway. The NBA's got themselves a pretty nice slate. And, of course, we've got plenty to discuss in uh, the NFL as those divisional playoffs were inching that much closer here to, uh, to the big day on February 11th. And the man taking over at the top of the hour, helping you navigate all these games here tonight. The one and only Scotty Wetzel in the house, opposite picks, ready to roll. And Scotty, uh, always a pleasure here, my man. We got college hoops, we got NBA, we got storylines galore here in the NFL uh, for this weekend. But let's flip it back. What was the most surprising result of this past weekend for you in the NFL? Um, I, I'd have to say Dallas, even though, you know, really, it, is it really a surprise that Dallas loses in the postseason, right? I mean, it's not that big of a surprise. Uh, I did think Pittsburgh would be a little bit more competitive, not surprised with the Texans. I thought they would beat the Browns. So it's, it's got to be Dallas just because they were a seven point favorite, right? They're the biggest favorite in the home team to lose. Uh, I really thought Tampa Bay was going to beat Philadelphia, so I, I won't go there. And the Dolphins are my beloved Dolphins in the cold weather. They had no shot. They had no shot whatsoever. So it's got to be, you know, by default, the Dallas girls losing again at home as a seven-point favorite. And really, the the game was not indicative of the final score, right? I mean, they they were getting crushed. They were embarrassing. So uh, it's got to be Dallas against uh, the Green Bay Packers. So uh, is, uh, is it safe that you think McCarthy's gone? Do you think it's uh, it's time to move on? I mean, right, they're stuck to Dak. They're so, stuck. That's it. You, you know, know what I mean? So like, what happens? Yeah. They're, they're living in purgatory, right? Do, ultimately, do I think he gets fired? No. Would I move on? I would. But, you know, one thing about Jerry Jones, right? All the criticisms and everything else, but he's pretty loyal, right? How long did he keep Jason Garrett around? A long time. Way longer than he should have. He, he should have been fired years ago, but he stuck on them. How long have we known this about Dak? We, we, you know, he, he, there's nothing new. This is not, you know, we don't, he doesn't win the postseason for whatever reason. Yep. He's terrific in the regular season, doesn't play well in the postseason. But is he going to get rid of him? No. So I think he, they're both probably back. They, they do have a little bit of a dilemma, Joe. There's three ways Dallas can go. They can keep Dak Prescott and give him a contract extension. They can keep mm. Dak and pay him, you know, and, and keep him on the books for $60 million. Or they could trade him. So he's going to be, if, for those that don't know, he's got to be $60 million cap it. Whether he's on the team or whether they cut him, it's $60 million. So they, they don't want to do that, yep. right? No team can really survive that. So they either have to give an extension. This way you can lower that cap hit. Or you could trade him. And would there mm. be another GM that would say, okay, we'll take Dak. We'll take that $60 million cap hit, but we're going to give him an extension, kind of like what Cleveland did with Deshaun Watson? I bet you'd find a GM that would say yes to that. So, you know, what do you do if you're a Cowboys fan? You keep him. Oh. You, but then, you, like I said, if you keep him, you have to give him an extension. And do you really want to get three, four more years at Dak Prescott? I mean, so I don't know. It's tough. We're in a tough I, well, spot. listen. You're a Dolphins fan. It's you got it. That's the yeah. same dilemma. What are you going to yep. do with Tua? Is this your franchise quarterback? A guy who, you know, beats sub 500 teams. Fantastic. But every time he steps up in class and can't win with temperatures under 40 degrees, uh, are you? And that's a lot of money for a guy that what led the league in passing yards and everything else. So uh, is he worth it? In your opinion, you're a Dolphins guy. Are you? 
Are you moving on and finding somebody to take him, or what are you doing here with Tua? Yeah, I, I want to move on. I do. Uh, yeah. You said it. It can't win. Just, you know, how many years you got? And then you still, you know, you didn't have to worry this year, although you worried, but it didn't come into play, the concussion thing, but that that's always lingering. I'm not enamored with, uh, you know, Mike McDaniels. I, I don't think he's a very good head coach either. You know, mm. if you can't win the big games, that's a good team, Joe. Now, they're not yep. like previous Dolphin teams in that they actually have star players and they're back in the limelight and they're a public team, but they're not playing any better than what they were. The same record is, uh, you know, what they had with their previous regime when they when they got rid of all the guys. So uh, Brian Flores, sa- same coach, same record. It, it's the same thing. So nothing's changed. Um I don't want to give a guy like that $40, $45 million. And that's the going rate, right? That That's the going rate yep. for an NFL quarterback. Now, it sounds crazy, but it's $40 million. You want to lock in four more years, five more years? I don't, want to, uh, Um Trade him, yeah. move on, go get me another quarterback, and we'll start new all over again. I got no problem with that. I, I agree. I mean, there are uh, some come-to-Jesus uh, terms here that are going to have to happen in this offseason. Uh, the one thing we know for sure – the future looks bright for the Texans uh, because yeah. they won't have to pay Stroud for a couple of years there. Uh, and Jordan Love, I, I mean, have you seen a more a, a quarterback mature faster in the season like we have seen what this guy has done with LaFleur? I think having a pretty good offensive line and a healthy running game with Aaron Jones certainly helps it. But I don't think anybody saw you rewind the clock who who had Jordan Love and CJ Stroud uh, with the possibility to upend teams here in the play. I don't think anybody we would have thought you were crazy, Scotty. Yeah, I mean, I said that about the Indianapolis Colts, too. You know, who would have thought the yeah. Colts and Texans, both, both teams would be playing on the last weekend with the winner getting yep. in and, and the loser not making it, right? And nobody, it, it's crazy to think what they did. You know, I, I read a stat and I was like, you know, and we all follow the NFL and then you, you know different stats and you, you miss out on some of the obvious ones. But I read where, you know, Jordan Love, he had 21, well, he had 18, but now he's got 21 touchdown passes with the three this last week, Joe, since week 11, 21 and only one interception. Oof. He was actually number two. And I know I should know this, but, you know, uh, he was number two in passing touchdowns this year behind Dak Prescott, yep. oddly enough. I mean, I think if you ask the average, you know, the, the real good NFL fan, who was the number two touchdown passer? You know, you'd probably get Tua and a bunch of the others, right? It was actually Jordan Love with 32. Crazy. So he started off yep. good, had that, that that middle spin there where he was awful. And you were really wondering if he was any good or not. And, and then he closed out with a bang, so... Add him to the list of all these bright young quarterbacks in the NFL. Just a great job, great coaching job, great, you know, Aaron who? I mean, if you're Green Bay and you're watching this, you're going, Aaron who? What? I don't remember him. Brett who? Um, Just unbelievable (laughs) job there by the Packers organization here. But uh, is it a chalky weekend looking ahead for you? uh, Or is one of these big, almost double-digit favorites – not only not going to cover, may not win the game, in your opinion. No, nah, you know, I'd like to say the fancy, uh, you know, friendly, fun thing to do is say, give me all these uh, underdogs, but it's tough, Joe. You know, when you win your Super Bowl like Houston did last week, young team and everything, and be able to beat the Browns, to be able to bounce back, get back down to earth and, and face a Baltimore team, a veteran team, that's got all this pressure of, you know, having to win the big one with Lamar on it. I, I don't know. I, I just – I don't think they're going to get blown out, but I, I don't think they're going to cover it. I don't think they're going to win. Um, same thing, you know, with San Francisco. Jordan Love, terrific story. We just talked about it right, but they, they really had no business being here. Uh, number seven seed. Are they going to go to San Francisco and beat the Niners? I don't think so. And right. I don't even think it's going to be – you know, I don't think they're going to lose by 30, mind you, but – I, you know, 30 to 10, you know, 27, 10, something like that. And I think really Buffalo, to tell you the truth, might have the easiest run of all just the way they're playing. Um, the moxie, the, the chip on their shoulder. I'm not a big fan of Kansas City this year. I think it's going to be a tough spot for them. Um, the only one I'm not really sure of is, is Detroit and Tampa Bay, you know. Which team comes back down to earth, right? You know, Detroit finally winning. If you watch that playoff game, I mean, they treat that like it was a Super Bowl, for for goodness sakes. Can they come back Mm -hmm. down to earth, or can Tampa Bay come back down to earth? I think that one will be a a pretty close game. Well, it's, uh, I mean, 
I was wrong on Baker Mayfield, too. My goodness. Uh, resurrect. Yeah. Uh, here you go. So uh, kudos to them. A lot to be decided. All right, talk to us here. Some college basketball on the way here tonight. Did you have a game that you were focused on? I got five real quick. Um, and what, I think one of these is underway, Kentucky, Mississippi. I got four unders and five and one over. Uh, I've been playing these Ooh. teams basically religiously from the start of the season, and we made a lot of money. We're, we're, we're up big with these guys. Under Virginia, Virginia Tech, why not? Rivalry game. Uh, if you History-wise, they play low-scoring games, so we're going to go under there. We're going to go under Houston, Texas Tech, 130. Halfway decent number for a Houston game. Uh, Cougars, uh, Joe, coming off back-to-back losses, which I, I don't know when the last time Houston's had back-to-back losses. So I'm thinking they're going to come out gangbusters. And normally, most teams, that means a lot of points running and gunning, but not with Houston. You you know, uh, they, they want to keep games in the 50s. So we're going to get their prime effort tonight, and I don't doubt that because of those two straight losses. Th- this has got 60 to 50, you know, 55, 50, something like that, 58, 50 written all over it. Uh, love playing unders and Rutgers home games, especially against Nebraska. We're going to go under there. UCLA against Arizona State. You know, UCLA stinks this year, although they did win their last game. But one thing has mm. been constant is, is unders. They're one of the better under teams. You know, them, the Rutgers, uh, Houston, Virginia, all great, you know, top uh, or bottom 10, depending on how you look at it, under teams in, in the nation. Uh, so give me the under UCLA, Arizona State. And the one over I'm going to play is Mississippi State and Kentucky. I know that's underway already, but uh, you can bet it in-game live, and it's on well on its pace to be in an over game. So one over yep. and four unders in the college hoops uh, side of things. 47-29 at the break there, Kentucky in front. Okay. All right. I wait all year for a tennis <laughs> tournament yes. to come around so you can start laying out some tennis um, you know, systems. And, and I know you know this, so lay it out for us. Uh, nobody's more profitable in tennis than you, mostly because you're the only one who watches it. So tell us, what are we doing here? <laughs> We can't. This is a can't lose. We buried the lead here. We can't lose five leg parlay. All right, oh. we're gonna take Alexander Zverev for uh, on the men's side. We got four men's and or uh, three men's and two women. We're gonna put him in a five piece parlay. Uh, he's the number six seed. He's taking on a guy who's two and eight for his career. He's not losing. We're gonna take Alcaraz. He's number two seed. He's not losing to anybody, especially the stiff he's playing tonight. Uh, number three seed, uh, Medvedev. He plays actually overnight, like 3 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to look for that, make sure you look on Thursday slate. Uh, he's taking a guy that's uh, ranked 53rd. He's got zero career titles. He's not losing. We're going to switch over to the women. We're going to take uh, Swiatek, uh, the number one seed. Daniel Collins, pretty good, but she's 30. She's over the hill. She hasn't won big. She's not winning tonight. Uh, one and four against Swiatek. And then the last piece, we're going to go a little Buffalo syndrome. Little Buffalo Bills ride the karma of the Bills with Jessica Pagula, minus 750 against a 22-year-old uh, who's ranked 51st. She's not an upsetting uh, Pagula. Not happening. Uh, so put them all together. You do have to still lay minus 232 in this parlay, Joe, but it's, it's not. I mean, how's it losing? How's it? It can't lose. I got all seven, eight, nine, ten to one favorites. Put it in on FanDuel and you'll, get, you'll come up a winner. We, we laid minus 260 before, I, 230 before on worst bets. Believe you me. I, I got a five-team same-game parlay, and I'm still laying three dollars. I can't. I, I can't. Absolutely there are no disgusted more with all I, I of you. Throw it anymore, I'm disgusted right? with all of you. That is just absolutely <laughs> awful on so many levels that I love it. You might as well just throw in. I mean, why not? Just take Portland uh, Trailblazers on the money line tonight in San Antonio. It can't go. What could go wrong? Scotty Wetzel, opposite picks, taking over top of the hour. We'll close it out next. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Ken. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro Football Today.
It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. I really thought the Lions were going to blow out the Rams. And in the first half, I was like, all right, I got one right here on this one. And then the Lions, what happened, Jacob? They, like, stopped playing. The Lions offense is more of a complete unit right now because they have a really strong run game. And I know Tampa's run defense is good, too. But all they need is David Montgomery and Trier Gibbs to do a little, and that'll open things up for Derek Goff. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Well, we've got some breaking news here as we look to close out this edition of Game Time Decisions. Want to thank you guys so much for hanging with us here. Got so much more still to come here on the Sports Grid Network. Scotty Wetzel and the crew will take over for in-game live primetime in just a minute. But we are learning from the NFL. Dallas. Texas is where we will go as it is now being reported that Jerry Jones is announcing that there will not be a coaching change next year for the Dallas Cowboys. That means head coach Mike McCarthy is returning for the 2024 season for better or for worse. The Dallas Cowboys have decided now is not the time to blow it up. So uh, there you go. It's uh, Everyone was so sure that Jerry would fire McCarthy and make a pitch for some very, very intriguing names that are available in the head coaching world. Uh, at the top of that list, of course, Bill Belichick, although I never really thought Jerry and Bill would be a great match anyway. But when you consider uh, Mike Vrabel, uh, his availability, when you consider... Uh, the fact that uh, we also have here Harbaugh is not only uh, interviewing or did interview with the Chargers, he's interviewing with Atlanta. Uh, and there are some extremely interesting names still available in the coaching ranks. And Jerry says, yeah, uh, not today. I'm interested in keeping a McCarthy. Uh, would not shock me if there are some. Uh, and where does Dan Quinn go? That's going to be the interesting part. Do they lose Dan Quinn as the defensive coordinator? Uh, might this really look like a different coaching staff next year because of this? A uh, lot still to be determined for the Dallas Cowboys. But that's the way Jerry loves it. 
Uh, it is drama, and we got plenty of it. All right, don't go anywhere. We've got much more coming your way in game live prime time with a look in college basketball and NBA. Straight ahead, we'll see you again tomorrow here on Game Time Decisions. <laughs>